Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a movie prop show and tell that I've had way longer than I've been doing tested and yet I've never talked about. So I think it's time. What is this in front of me? Uh, no, we are not about to do a frog dissection video, even though this has great resonance to me of high school biology class. Um, and this is a frog, but it is not a real frog. It is a frog-shaped object. Uh, this is, in fact, a movie prop built for uh, an awesome movie. I'm trying to figure out how to do the reveal for you, but I guess there's no other way to tell you then. Uh, this is one of the thousands of frogs made for the uh, one of the last scenes in the movie Magnolia, in which frogs rain down from the sky on Los Angeles. It's an allegory or something. I love the movie Magnolia. Uh, it is a terrific movie. Uh, it is, yeah, sticks with me after all these years. I've watched it three or four times. Uh, and it, towards the end of the movie, spoilers, uh, frogs rain from the sky, like a biblical prophecy of some kind. And this is one of those frogs, right? So like you're making a movie, how do you make frogs drop from the sky? And moreover, how do you make that realistic? And so the production contracted a special effects company. I'm not actually sure who made these frogs, um, but they made lots of them. Uh, and this is one of them. And they are kind of awesome objects because it's more than just a frog shaped object. It's meant to look correct when it falls and that involves some cool technology. Um, no, someone's just working on the roof. All right, so we have our frog here. What's it made out of? It's made out of rubber, to be sure. That's what I would make them out of too, but it's it's a specific kind of rubber that I have um, not worked with as a casting medium. This is made out of that kind of rubber that like, look at that. Do you remember those little toys, the little octopuses you could throw on the window and they'd slowly like walk their way down the window? Um, they still make some things like this. Uh, it's a super, super low durometer rubber, which means it's incredibly soft and it's also sticky. This feels genuinely gross and it leaves a sort of an oily residue on your hand. So it's kind of gross in every way. Um, but the best part about it is how realistically it looks like a piece of biological animal. It's not stiff like a hard rubber frog would be. It actually has a, a huge amount of movement and I'm pretty sure they probably chose the, yeah, that's the other thing is, is it, yeah, it, it plops and it plops in a way that I find really super compelling. Um, it's, this is a great piece of kit. Uh, I'm not sure what this type of rubber is called. Again, I didn't do my research, um, but it is just a fabulous thing. I have no idea how they dropped thousands of them, whether there was just like dudes on scissor lifts throwing them off for every camera shot, or if they made giant dump baskets, but if they did, they would have come down in clumps. So even just like, this sort of goes to, how much problem solving is in making a prop for a film, right? Like, okay, we need frogs to drop from the sky. It's not as simple as calling someone and saying, we need a bunch of frogs, because you have needs for how those frogs move in frame, the story that they tell. And if they just bounce off the ground, you're not gonna buy it. You're not gonna, you're gonna lose that suspension of disbelief. So when the special effects company gets called, they not only have to figure out how to make them, what to make them out of, and then how to pose them so that in a neutral position, they still look like a frog, understand that the sort of neutral position that something gets cast in often has a huge amount of bearing on what happens to it later in a film, like how it moves and how it, what its attitude is to a certain extent. Um, so the special effects company has to make all those calls and then the special effects team has to figure out how to dump all those. And uh, I, I'm not exactly sure how they did the dump, but I just love that there's this big, fat, gross bulldog, a bull, bullfrog of a prop uh, and that it comes from such a, like, I don't know, there's something about this prop that's really sort of disgusting in a way that feels very immediate, almost like a horror film kind of disgust. And the fact that this was built in service of a movie that is so like not a horror movie, Magnolia is so much more of a tone poem about human sadness and Los Angeles and the things that connect and disconnect us and the stories we tell ourselves about our families and all of that. 
Um, and even in a movie, uh, a drama, a beautiful P.T. Anderson directed drama like that, you still have to answer these really basic questions in the film crew about like, well, okay, how do we make 50,000 frogs? Oh, also, there's the question of how do you make these frogs and make them cheap? Right? So this frog is totally unpainted. It's been molded in a rubber. And I, I believe that they made some hero frogs that were lightly airbrushed for close-ups for the frogs that landed in the foreground. And then they simply chose a color. They mixed this disgusting kind of snot green color for all the background frogs. And that's also a fairly frequent movie thing. You, you paint the stuff that gets close to camera and you mold and color all the stuff that's back there behind because you, you, there's no way you could afford to mold and carefully trim and paint 5,000 frogs. I have no idea how many, many they made for the film. I will tell you, when I bought... <laughs> When I bought these frogs, I bought them by the pound. I literally bought 20 pounds of frogs. And over the years, when people tell me that Magnolia is one of their favorite movies, every now and then I'll bag up one of these frogs and send it to them. Because, well, I've got, a, I've got probably 30 of them, 30 or 40. Yeah, they're not light. Um, there you go. That is a little bit of... Uh, that is a little bit of film history there, a delightful prop from a movie you wouldn't have thought of as a special effects extravaganza, and yet still needing the same kind of service from a special effects company. This is a Magnolia Frog. I'm Adam Savage. We are still on lockdown. Stay safe, stay away from each other, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks very much. Have a good day. Here, let's do this drop. Here we go. <laughs> there is a one last thing I'm noticing as I was shooting the slow-mo shots of this falling and to be honest I was thinking that would be the end of the video um, and yet I'm also noticing that as it falls if it falls and it's twisted it tends to untwist and kind of slowly move and that is this whole other level of kind of cool realism to get out of this I'm not sure if that was by design at the front or if that was a happy accident but it's really neat if you're dropping a bunch of these behind somebody some of those frogs if they're still moving, it adds this whole extra layer of realism that's really neat. So there you go. Ooh, swimming towards the camera.